consciousness anyway on a daily basis uh, so yeah uh, welcome to the people who don't know where they are right now we're having rhythm uh, this is a hold on wait for my controller to pop up there it is ah, presentations so we're a product consulting here company here downtown uh, most of our clients are fintech uh, we specialize in engineering design and pretty much anything under the sun. You guys want product owners, we got product owners, we got copywriters. Uh, all of our rhythm, rhythmers, raise a hand. Got a solid bunch. So, Alan. I want to be oh. <laughs> See, he's already like not to try to distance himself from me. Uh, so I'm the senior director of product design here. Uh, so one of the things that we do, which is on top of placing people at sites, is bringing in some of the highest, you know, most passionate, energetic people in their field. For a lot of people who have dealt with me on a daily basis, y'all know that I am creative. <laughs> Either way you want to go with it. Uh, but that's what it is. It's about bringing in people who want to learn, want to grow, want to just be better at their field and just do better things in their life. So with that, why are we here? So, oh, my gift's not working. Which is a great example of bad UX. So, uh, why are we here? So, I look at a lot of what we do on a daily basis as living one of those shitty ass infomercials where you deal with people and they just, they don't know what's going on. Like, what am I supposed to do with my product? How am I supposed to get it to market? It's a tough challenge. And the main thing that we always deal with is trying to get it there fast, cheap, and make it successful, especially when it comes to MVPs. And then from a design end, we get there, and then we have to worry about the engineering end. So there's two things that we have to worry about there. Did it move? Oh, it did move. Uh, I set it up wrong. So one of the things that I want to talk about, knowing that this is a design sprint, uh, how many UX UI designers we got in the room? Oh, we got a lot of them, which is good. Uh, but for the people who don't know UX UI and people who deal with us creative people on a daily basis and don't know what we do every day, it's essentially what the two sides of your brain are set up as. So for your analytical side, our job is to come in, understand our user, do the research, you know, do uh, market testing, understand scenarios of where we're gonna go, go through user flows, page, uh, page stories, and that's just one side of our job. And within that, we build those like low fidelity wireframes. If anybody has seen something that looks like a black and white website, that's essentially what uh, your, UI, your UX designer does. Your UI designer is that flashy one who comes in, throws that coat of paint on, does some Photoshop work, 
builds your icons unless you have a design language system um, and gives it that extra little feel. For a lot of us, we do both of it because it's, it's an end-to-end -end process. Some of us come from graphic design beforehand. Some of us are just really good at art and some of us just really enjoy fighting for the user, which is really what makes a lot of our job essential. So, this is a fun graph. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So we have two real angles of, of our spectrum. So we have design thinking, which is on the design side what we do to start a project, which is you understand your user, you empathize with them, you ask the right questions in interviews, you build low fidelity sketches in your head, before you even get to a full-on design sprint or an agile process. And it's just a small part of what we do every day. Once we get there, we go into the design sprint, which we're all going to talk about later. And in between that, you end up in agile, in an agile process. Show of hands, who knows agile, who's been in agile? Sweet. Dan knows. <laughs> By the way, this is our, uh, at American Express, our Agile marketing scrum master. Yeah. Jack of all trades. Yeah. Anything else I get into that? No. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the hardest things, even for me, like when I was starting out and getting into UX, coming from a print background, was understanding like design thinking as a whole. <clears throat> and one of the things that was tough was some of this seems natural. Like when you talk to somebody, you talk to a client, you hear their story and what they want to do, what they're passionate about, and don't try not to trip over that, um, and want to build something that makes them proud. You know, talking to them about what they want to do next, talking about them what their future is, and even getting them just to their MVP because sometimes that's all they want. You came up with a pretty solid analogy. So, we all love food, right? How many people cook here? That's a surprisingly, Alec, you don't cook, Alec. So, when you want to cook something, and you want to cook it real well, you take a cooking class, right? That's your design thinking. When you go in and you meet somebody and you're in a class with a bunch of people, and I want to learn how to make some fly ass lo mein, and we go in and they say, so here's what we're gonna do. Here's the spices you use. This is the, so for some places, I've been to one that they really did like a deep dive on like the culture and like why you use this certain knife, which I do not have in my regular everyday like cutlery set or the spices or anything else. So my low main at home is not good. Um, <laughs> but that's what it is. You learn, you learn about the background, you listen to what they're saying, you understand it, and then you start learning the process of it. And that's a lot of what design thinking is. You get to a point that when you want to make something, you have just a disgusting amount of knowledge about it. And sometimes it's good until you have to try to get rid of it and push new stuff in there. The recipe, which we all tend to work with after the fact, especially if you use like HelloFresh or any of those interesting internet-based uh, delivery systems, this is your design sprint. It's a step-by-step -step roadmap to get you from this mess of shit that's on the counter to the final dish that hopefully does not taste horrible and is enough to feed yourself, maybe a family, maybe whoever a stranger is there that night. This is <laughs> surprisingly the easiest way that I could put together. This is my job, if anybody's wondering, every day. <laughs> Think about food, read about food, make food, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so when we think about this process, it seems super easy, and for all the people in the back who deal with me on a professional basis, I, I know I make it look this easy on a constant basis, I'm sure you, you know. The design sprint itself, this is how it all started. These bros from Google, Google Ventures, wrote a book. They tried to figure out easiest way to get from that mess of shit on your counter to an MVP in a five-day process. I actually have my coffee here because it's 
still pristine. Mm -hmm. And the fun part is, whenever you go through design books, and for anybody who has them, they have pictures inside, which cuts back on your reading and just leads to visual examples of what you have to do. Because, you know, reading is hard sometimes on a subway or in the bathroom or wherever you do your reading these days. <laughs> so their hypothesis was, how do we get from point A to point B? Who do we need in the room every day? How long do they need to be in the room every day? And what are the real contributing factors to get them there and to get them done? It's a great book. You should get it. Unfortunately, what I'm here to do is tell you those five days of bullshit. We're going to do it in four. And that last day, you can just hang out, do nothing, or if you're the artsy person in the room, probably pick up another project or work more. Because let's be serious. Uh, we never stop. The other idea behind this is that this is high energy. This is fast. This is, this is hard work. Unlike the recipes you can take your time doing, which I would love to on a, on a daily basis, but we all know we all get home late. We want to eat before midnight, and we got to rush through it. Sometimes that causes errors. This takes care of a lot of the errors. Let's see what we got. So this is the original. So in a five-day sprint, and this is all about testing. The main part of this is just getting to a point that you can go into a test where you can bring it to usability testing, do qual quant testing, go from here, and then loop back around. So it's a constant flow of ideas, a constant flow of movement, until you get to that point that you feel comfortable to pushing it live to the, to the market. Some people skip testing because their timelines are ridiculously tight, and it's, you know, you do what you can. Monday, we learn from product people, we learn from the stakeholders involved, map out the process of what the page is gonna, or the product will feel like, the story, the ideas behind it, understand the metrics, understand the KPIs, where we need to be by the time we get here. So Monday's all about learning. Tuesday, we have, this is why you guys see some fun stuff. We got a little, little activity for you guys later. And also to give me a pee break if I need it. Um, <laughs> is we sketch. We go through uh, techniques like crazy eights, which we're gonna do. We're gonna do how may we's, how might we's, may, like, whatever. Um, and we're gonna go through that process of understanding how fast this moves and it's Wait until we get to the sketch round, y'all gonna have fun. And nobody has to look good, just has to get the idea across. Then by Wednesday, we're deciding on what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna storyboard the process of if this is an app, how the flow is, if it's a, if it's a site, we go through the user journey and we figure out how they're gonna get from you know, landing on our site to possibly acquisition or getting on our site and buying them fly ass pants that we're selling today. And then we prototype. This day, it's a designer's best friend. This is where, if you noticed, this is where the whole group stops. This is where one person gets to throw in their earbuds, ignore the world, and for nine hours, just get, it, get something done. For a lot of us, one day is not enough, depending on the size of the project, but complete peace for eight hours in your day. I don't know who gets that normally. This is like sleep. Like, who gets eight hours of sleep today? Um, nobody. So we get to that prototyping phase, hopefully everybody's on board. People see it and they're like, oh, you got it. Your, your stakeholders are like, five days, we got here. How the fuck did we get here by Thursday? That's the, that's the best part about it. Then we throw it into testing. And then the users may say, oh, I don't get it. As UX designers, or designers in general, marketing people, I know you know it. How many times have you went to a usability testing and heard somebody say, oh, I don't get it, it doesn't make sense. I get a lot of head nods there, which is scary, but that's good. When we, when we do that, we're always learning. Much like wrapping it back up to a rhythm, we're all about learning and growth as people and our development as professionals. That's how I'm gonna design sprint the hell out of in rhythm right now. Come here, you learn, you grow, 
you test it, if it ain't working, you keep going. So this is that five day sprint. So we got Friday free, remember, happy hour, all day. <laughs> Pushing everything down the funnel really smack, putting mapping and sketching together. So you get a lot done and momentum, the difference with this is momentum shifts from breaking up Monday and Tuesday and moving it to one day. Once you start that conversation about what goes on and you understand what people are doing and you understand your KPIs and you hear from your stakeholders and you, you get that gist of what is going on in this project. And this is from like a global, well, this is not even just the designer, this is everybody in the room. You guys can roll right into sketch. Go through those exercises because you're striking when the iron's hot essentially. And then by Tuesday, you guys are so far ahead. You guys had already, you know where you are, you're deciding, you're going through that storyboard, you're going through that flow, you're hearing what everybody talked about yesterday and just riding that wave. Then, now the designer got Wednesday. Spend all day, build your prototypes, make sure everything looks tight, and then and by Thursday we're testing. So, from a velocity standpoint, and for Scrum Masters in the room, Velocity is everything, because that's the KPI that they work by. You get so much done in four days. By the time you do have Friday open, you have a day almost of knowledge that you guys can go. You get the information from the test that day. You go back and say, what did we learn from this? And then stop by four and then go to get drinks. But mm -hmm. it's all about having people working together. Having two days working together for like eight hours a day with a group of people, some people can't do it. It's a lot of time, you know, we all have meetings, we all have all the regular bullshit that we go through every day. But having people work together for that long, it's just, it builds camaraderie, which again, when you work in big companies, you get pulled over in all different directions. You know, you start a conversation here, or as my designers know, I'll say, oh, I wanna to talk to you about something, and then leave for five hours. Um, I, stopped, I think I did it today, actually. But that's what it's about. It's building this momentum. When you get a team that works like this and you start swapping out and, pres and all the personalities start growing and moving, there's nothing y'all can't do as a team. So it's always a good thing. So this is Monday. So when I talked about all the knowledge share stuff, we're gonna go through some of these little things. These are how my weeks. Um, <laughs> Wait for it. Uh, <laughs> that's what we do. We go through and we learn the information. And what I want you guys to do, there are pads on your tables right now. So grab some post-its. As you guys have been listening to me, I'm sure y'all got questions. This is for Q&A later. You could ask anything. You guys can ask about design sprints. You could ask about how we do, you know, why cooking? Why don't you use cooking? Why you use your food? Why not Indian food? I love all food, so that's okay. Except pizza, I can't make pizza. I don't know why. But it's all about asking the correct questions about your end user or your end experience. So, like you see, the middle one obviously this is a fan service for all the people that are currently in the how many cursing curses are Joe gonna say during the pool tonight? Um, which, uh, you're at three. No. Nine. 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 Yeah. Nine. When did that happen? Nine. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I don't think we're at halftime yet, so we're almost there. Um, but yeah, so we conduct interviews, we talk to other people, we understand what's going on, and then we, we go through these how might we, we throw them on a board and we ask the questions of each other. Because no matter how close or removed you are from a product, there's always a different perspective. People who are closest to it, that's their baby. That's what happens. Like. Drea knows, Drea just gave me that, because if you talk to her about her product, she will go ad nauseum at you about it. But that's good, because that's what she loves, that's what she's doing, that's what's, that's what's great, because her level of uh, closeness to it is why her how might be, how might we might be different than mine. We're looking at it from, from a totally different perspective, from a UX perspective, from a, and it's just something in our flow, eh, we'll get to it later type thing, you know, to, a product person who only cares about the technical side of it all. <clears throat> so that's why these how might we's are so good for us to kind of 
give your opinion and you give them in more of a softer, more cuddly way than being there and be like, you know what, I don't like that. <clears throat> and we've all been in meetings where people say that, I've, I've said it quite a few times, so I'm, <laughs> I'm notorious for it. And then we come up with the long-term goals and then we ask the question of us, what do we want to accomplish? And then what we produce, we go through lightning demos, which means we go through quick, quick exercises about how we're gonna build things out. And then we got these fun sketches that we're gonna do. So on your tables, you'll see eight and a half by 11 sheets. If y'all pick some eight and a half by 11 sheets, fold it in half, long ways, short ways, either way. Hot dog and yeah, hot dog and hamburger style. You're going to do three folds. And now, get ready. Wait till you see what I want you guys to do. Huh? Yeah, we'll see how I do it. Three three sections? Not one. Three folds. One, two, three. I just don't know why I made that motion. I think you guys made it. So you got six. Eight. One more. Sam. <laughs> Uh -huh. Don't rush me. All right. So, the best part about this is it's called Crazy Eight for a reason. You got eight panels. You got eight minutes. You got one minute per panel. I know. Let's get that time around. Wait, I'll get there. Wait for, making sure everybody's got yeah. their papers folded and ready to go. I still stand by the phone. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something extremely simple. How many people here use Amazon on a daily basis? Well, most likely on a daily basis. Let's be serious. We do that shit every day. We're going to just write stuff down. Um, when you go to Amazon, we have the most common use part of their site, which is their product page. When you say, I want to buy some coffee, you click on the coffee and then it brings up the coffee, the description, all the information about it. And just for the people who work at Am Amex, I am not trying to crowdsource our product <laughs> detail pages. This is just how it's working. Um, and it was something that everybody knew. So they say, oh my God, people are dropping off. We have no idea why people are not engaging in this area. What's your eight minutes? I want you to come up with as many different versions of a product page. Uh, you know what, let's stick to mobile, because I think it's easier that way. For you guys, it's gonna be, you know, doing a big page is a lot of information. Let's stick to mobile. You have very limited space. I know that made it seem like I made it a little easier, but I definitely made it hard. Um, so what you wanna do, you wanna put a picture, description, uh, no, a buy it now button, Add to, add to cart, price, of course, most, most definitely. So anybody got any questions before we start this up? No? All right, let's get started. Eight minutes on the clock. And I wanna use this time to get another beer. And the best part about this is this cuts back on your thinking. Like, go what's natural to you guys. Think about what you see when you go onto these sites. It could be any e-com site. It doesn't have to be Amazon. I just know it's the most common one. And if I say them enough times, maybe they'll just bring my Prime packages right to me right here. On to the next sketch. Oh, jeez. Do you want that search function? Whatever you feel. I got two minutes left. Come on, keep going. No, no, I literally can't even bring my juice. Just, just, just keep drinking. No, just keep drinking. Just keep thinking. Just keep drinking. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And the best part about this, because this is on day one, you are doing this with your entire team. So you have the UX designers, you have the marketing people, the product people, you have the scrum master getting in the mix. Everybody in the room are coming up with these ideas. And the idea is that this is a no ego zone. So when you're a designer, the idea is to build a story around the people with you. And for the people who work with me who say like, oh, why didn't we do this? Look. On to the next one. On to three. <laughs> it's like freaking out of me. Question. Yes. So this is the interactions on you. Does that change the design? Depends on, depends on who you are. Depends asking, on how you feel. I'm asking you what the rules of this game are. The rules are whatever you make of it. Because you have 40 seconds left on this drawing, <laughs> you can think about how much, if you're already done with three, you could drop in more information, drop in another interaction, see how you want to, how the people feel about it. Or you can just stop and start thinking about your next one. Are you giving up? This is not that you've got to leave. I know. And on to the next one. But what's funny is. The first one is usually the hardest, because once you know how much time you have, you think quicker, you think faster, you come up with more iterations of what you did. It's a way to keep your juices flowing on day one. some background while you're drawing. The reason why there is colored paper, colored pencils, glitter glue out on the table is because as we, uh, I've matured as a designer over time, I have been notoriously, notoriously referred to as digital arts and crafts. That's true. Yeah. So I'm just going to, I'm always going to just turn that curve because why not? It is, it works out pretty well for me. somebody who actually is colorblind, uh, 
Are you it's, it yeah. <laughs> accessibility is probably our biggest attribute these days. Accessibility for, from the idea of can't hear, you know, blind, deaf, and color, it's figuring out how we can make sure that there's always that contrast, there's always that, that feel of a page that gives you that, that emotion that you get. Hold on, we got 10 more seconds. Um, but yeah, so when you're picking colors for a page, like if they don't already have an existing like uh, flow or uh, style guide, it'll be, last one. Um, sorry, I had to work that one in. Uh, it's always an important part of picking colors. You know, that comes into more of that visual design. Some people have styles that they want to go high vis, like bright yellows, bright greens, and then do like just blacks, just to have that soft contrast. And then other people are, you know, spectrum down. Like uh, one of my previous jobs working at IBM, they had a palette of like 90 colors, which was great because you had all the colors in the world to use, but then it gives you too many options. Like you're just like, what do I use here? How do I use here? How does it correspond to the next page in the journey? It works really well. Uh, it works, doing a spectrum works really well if you're very careful. And if you 20 up, seconds. If you mess up, then you get contrast in weird areas and it really looks bad. Yeah. So. That's where like going into that proto that day you have the prototype um, really does create, give you that time to play around with stuff. As a designer, you should be working through Three, two, one. All right. <laughs> so how did everybody do? Pull them up, let's see. Is that, are I putting any of them in the fridge here and I read them? Holy God. We got a, we got a lot done. Sam, how did you put all that? So. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, we have a t the table of UX designers here that all went ham on this. Um, but we have a product person in here who did, who did a great job. Yeah. We have a scrum person who did a great job. Like, this actually here, if we threw one of the marketing people from back there up here, that's a scrum. And we could probably pull something from each one of these drawings or come through and start working through that that knowledge of figuring out what would work best. Like as we see, let's say, what we got, let's get, let's get a couple of these. Okay, Sam's, let's see, Hannah. <laughs> oh, Dan, I think I saw some common. So what's really, really funny is we find commonalities in what people thinking are. So for instance, Dan? Yeah. One of, I'm, gonna come, I'm actually coming closer to the camera so I can see. Uh, so one of the things that Dan did in a couple of his thing, in a couple of his crazy eights, was add other photos. Yeah, I played with the photos being behind interactions or like thumbnails that you could click. Hannah, what'd you do? Other thumbnails. See, so we have we have common themes, and what's funny is these are not. UX UI designers. These are users of the experience. So, Sam, had any photo? This one, multiple photos? No. Uh, that's been multiple photos, but not scroll through. But not scroll through. So, we have right now a common theme. So, on this product page, we know that we would want to show multiple photos of the same item and then we have a baseline of where we create something. Like, is Sam's idea the best idea? Who knows? Is the idea between carousels being built in that Dan and Hannah made? I don't know. But we have that conversation. We have the smart uh, interactions with each other as a team and come up with a, with a plan. That leaves us on day one. Question? Yeah. Can you do the crazy eights with a journey? You could definitely do a journey if you think people can get through a journey <laughs> in one minute of yeah, shot. Two or three steps. I mean, yeah, I'm just yeah. saying this is like this movie makes us free, but I'm just wondering if you wanted to play with the actual on ramp to a site and getting them to another place or what they might go to first. Yeah. Does this lend itself to Oh, that? absolutely. Because again, that turns into that, that same pot of people where getting from point A to point B could be different. 
and it's a different way of thinking. And then again, you work through the commonalities and you find where you go, and that's when you go into your heat map mode. So we figure out from what people, what we will learn from each other, from crazy aids, from sketching, to get an idea of where we're gonna go next. So, oh, that's bad on the wall. Um, yeah. We can storyboard. We go through that user journey, as you said. Like, that from Crazy Eats doing a user journey, it would be a very high level. You know, we wanna get somebody to, like, let's say we wanna get somebody to purchase, we go through a discovery session and we talk about who our user is, what are we really looking to have them do, how are we looking to acquire? Then we take that deep dive. We ask them every little thing. What if they come through Facebook? What if they come through organic search? <coughs> how do we really think about their, their, their journey with us? Because you never know nowadays, sound like an old man, nowadays, um, they come from everywhere. We, they're not driven just from our site. People get ads in, ads in their email, push notifications from different sources, you know, on Facebook, you're on Instagram, maybe Snapchat if you're still doing that, because you got a long streak running. Um, <laughs> yep, cold you out right on that one. Um, but that's the thing, is we always have a point of contact, and that point of impact is always different. We're always brought there somewhere, from somewhere different. And we feel different when we get there. If we're scrolling through Instagram, and the last thing we saw was our friends on a beach, and then we saw this ad for this, you know, for me, most likely, it's a cell phone case because that's what I get aggregated content for, or American Express. Um, like, I click on it, but my emotion is different as I'm doing research and I'm on Google and I'm saying which one is the best for me. So we go through that user flow, and then we start doing the storyboarding. I used an app for this example because it just looks so much prettier, <laughs> you know. Um, and, like, have it work through. Talk about every step of the site. Again, this is not this is not pretty. This is not final. This is not going to market tomorrow. This is enough for people to get the idea, for your designers to come in and say, right now we're in Tuesday. You know, we have all of our information. We are all on the same page. We got a plan, and then the designer gets this, and then we, we argue about this for a good solid two hours, most likely, because I say, this goes to this, and someone else will be like, oh, this should go to this, and we should also have it go to this. And you'd be like, but we don't have that many buttons. And you'd be like, oh, well, forget it then. It's, but that's, again, it's all healthy debate. Nothing, the one thing I could always say is check your ego at the door whenever you're going into a design sprint. Depending on the people you're, in, you're with, it's not personal. It's always, it's always business, but it's not personal. So now we take all that function, we go to Wednesday, and it's the designer's day. This is me on a pretty typical day. Wait, wait for it. Yep, that's the look you get for me. Especially in a meeting from behind my laptop. Uh, yeah, coffee, cell phones going off. We build that low fidelity wireframe in, the low fidelity wireframe is built in the morning. We talk through, again, all the IA stuff or IA information architecture, uh, also known as UX, depending on which way you go or how old you are. Um, go through that flow. So when we go into the design, we refresh and say, we need to go and get it done. And then, just to let you know, that was a wireframe for this page. Um, and then your designer will go through the breakpoints, figure out all the issues that you may face when it comes to responsive design. Maybe when you're doing that wireframe, you're like, ah, this is not gonna look good on mobile. Like, how do we get to that point that mobile is, it, this is device agnostic and we're not worrying about that. Like, this all happens on Wednesday and we come together by the end of the day and the designer is most likely happy and not overworked and not hoping Thursday happens. Um, but then we go, and we go on to user testing. So for those who don't deal with user testing quite enough, uh, this is when you get a bunch of randos and have them go through your experience and really try to have them figure out like if you did a good damn job. And it's scary because you never know what's gonna happen. And one of my best points that I put at the bottom is never be afraid to fail. I said it earlier. If shit goes sideways, it's okay. Like, it's, it's fine to fail. It's okay to understand that what you did wasn't right as a collective. What you did missed the mark. Because guess what? 
We ride together, we die together. That's how it works. If we don't get back up, dust ourselves off, and get back at that shit, then we don't know what's gonna happen. So, after that Thursday, we have that extra day, right? We have that Friday, we get together, we talk, we say, oh my God, uh, Frank didn't like that. Like, we have, you have a guy who just says, nothing that we did was right. And you sit back and you have to say as a group, where do we go from here? Where in Monday and Tuesday did we miss the mark? Most likely, it's usually so something as simple as, maybe we had the wrong tone of, tone of voice. Maybe we just missed something that everybody really wanted. And for us, being so close to the project, much like our product owner in the back, uh, marketing person in the back, who's all snaps when I talk about pride. I'm not ashamed. Not ashamed. <laughs> um, uh, like maybe there's something there, which is fine. It's good. Pick ourselves up, start back again, wash, rinse, repeat, and get that shit going. And what format does this take? Is this just static images, or is it? This could be anything that you that warrants a positive experience for the user. That we can do the night before by your side. Depends on how you work. Depends on what you plan for. If you have just simple, if you're doing a very robust experience, then I'd say no, give them another day. But if it's something that we're doing a landing page or we're doing, uh, you know, like the product page that, that I had you sketch out, like you don't need much interaction on it. Maybe swipe through carousel type stuff, you know, stuff we can do in Envision that's easy that we can build in from craft. Low, low impact for where we have to go because if you put that much work forward, unless you are insanely confident that what you got is right. Um, bringing the usability testing with that much information may be too much and not maybe overkill, but we are also at the limitation of our tools sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I think it's always a case by case basis. For anybody, if you do see that we do have a four day spread, we could always use Tuesday and Wednesday for design and then Friday still go to testing, but it's again, case by case. I would love to do everything in four days, right Dan, four days? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so that's it. So, did anybody write down any how might we's? Any what? The how might we's. No, that's fine. Huh? Uh, I didn't write it down, but can I confess? Yeah. That left? So, how might we mitigate velocity when output speed varies from like team member to team member? For example, uh, like specifically in my scrum, I often find like we can end up with a low fidelity wireframe, but our copywriter will ultimately produce eight pages of copy that, that he's just starting on. So how do you mitigate different pacing, but maintaining that kind of group sense of momentum and velocity? It's a great question. And it hits close to home for me because I'm the designer on that project. Yeah. Um, so <coughs> we all know when we get new players in the, when we always get new players in the room, and this is a you know, old ancient sports metaphor. You never know who's gonna come out like swinging the bat. I'll use baseball because I love baseball. Uh, you never know where, where they're gonna hit in the lineup, where they're gonna succeed. That always takes time. In a four day sprint, you don't have time. So as hypothetically in this situation, your, your UX UI designer may be ahead of the new copywriter. They have to make sure that they think through the rest of their job. Get to Thursday faster than they need to. You know, and there's, we may not, and again, with this specific example, I have no idea what my modules will be because I don't know how the, where the text is gonna fit. But you have to think ahead, you have to be on your toes. When you have extra time to do it, you create the final product. It doesn't have to be, again, it doesn't have to be final, it doesn't have to be, you know, the UI does not have to be done. No visual design has to be done, but think through the possible like problems that you would face. Luckily for Dan, I already did that, and I already got the mobile, which is, which was scary, even for me, but it's all about adapting. Everybody in the room has to adapt. A new copywriter, especially being thrown in the mix on a Monday, who doesn't know background, doesn't know people, doesn't know personalities, it's tough. And that's where, also as UX designers, we got that empathy gene, got that emotional intelligence for days, um, that we look and we, and we don't try to crush them too much, and we work with them and try to get their juices flowing, because that's part of our job, is being Analytical. I hope that answered. I guess I kind of ran off of that one. Yeah. Perfect. Lily, in the back. How do you manage too many posts of images? Oh. Um, mm -hmm. Any idea of too many sick So. <laughs> Cursor.
personalities are a big part of the workplace. We all know that. Some of us are that. Um, when, you, when you go into a sprint, the idea is that it's exactly what it is. It's a sprint. It's you come out, you work hard, you get stuff done, you work as a team. If you have the higher ups that always want to be involved, that's up, for me it's always up to the people in the, in the, in the room. So for the marketing people to go up and say, this is where we're at, do daily check-ins, even though it's only four days, that daily check-in can really tie, turn the tide on after Monday. You know, you guys can leave and say, and for our designers, it's the same thing. We go back to our creative director, we go back to our director of UX and say, yo, so you know, we made this decision not to use this module. We made the decision to do this. And then they'll say, what, are you out of your fucking mind? Like, what are you doing? Like, that makes no sense. That will just throw us, that'll not work. And then you're just like, well, I think it's a good idea. I agree to it. They have to trust you to, to be the voice in the room. They have to trust you with your vision especially knowing that this is built to build to move. This is built to go to, go to prototyping, go to testing, like with <coughs> questions. Because if it doesn't go well, we are ready to go again. We're ready to keep moving because in some, in some of our companies, especially us, FinTech, it's always compliance, it's always questioning, it's always legal. You can't say this, you can't say that. When we go through a design sprint, the idea is that's fine. We're going into testing with it and we can always keep adjusting as we go. The biggest part of going through a design sprint is understanding what the user wants, understanding how to get them where we need to get them, and then making sure that they leave not confused. They leave engaged. And it, uh, copy is obviously a key thing for a lot of us when it comes to financial and healthcare. Just keeping them going. So that trust goes up. Talk to, you, talk to your leader and say, listen, I get that this isn't right. I get that you're not, I get that you don't have faith in this, but if it doesn't work, we can always pivot and do this. So, and it sucks, but it's the way it is. Question? Yeah. Um, back on the screen before you were talking about user testing, the first one you asked was, get the user's perception of the product. And the last thing was, where do users feel the product? What's the difference? So, the idea of, and I, and I love it. Thank you for picking up on that. I, sometimes I always hope that people ask me that question. The idea of... That was the same thing. <laughs> yeah, so when you come to a page and you see the page, and you first land on a page, you, that's a blank slate. It's a first date. You get there and you might not know what's going on. You're like, oh, this is what's, this is what's here. I have a big ass hero, I have a ton of copy, I have bright photography and then you keep scrolling down the page. So as you move through the page, it should, if you're doing your job right, conveying an emotion to them, having them understand why they're here, having them understand what they want. Um, it's different than that first impression. That perception of what they're going there for and the perception of how they leave are two totally different things. I've been on plenty of, you know, every app you go on, every website you go on, you go there with one intention and you may leave being like, Psh, this shit, and then gone. Like, I've downloaded plenty of apps that I'm like, and as a UX designer and as a user, I go, I don't, I don't get why they did this. I get lost. My favorite thing, obviously, the dumbest and simplest UX technique ever created was a swipe left, swipe right from dating apps. Mm -hmm. Specifically one, you know, Tinder. They're the ones who pretty much started it really well. Mm -hmm. The like, no thought involved. So when you get somebody and when you, from that perception versus feel, the perception is you come to this light, site, you see what you like, and you swipe. That, and then when you feel, you swipe up and get the information. Then you get a deep dive of who they are, understanding what they want, if you really do that, unless you just uh, swipe, you just swipe back and forth all day like it's a game. But if you're really searching, I use that term very, <laughs> very <laughs> um, you want to get more information. So, you know, that's why they, that's when you leave and you're just like, no, no, I want to meet this person. Then you get never hear from them again. So I feel like what you're saying is perception is what you think you should be doing with the screen or the app when you're looking at it. Then when you actually put your fingers on it to do the perception, that branches off to the feel for what you actually do. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for, for taking my 50 pounds of shit into a five pound bag. <laughs> Not my best quality. Um, anybody else? 
for these four days. Yeah. Um, how do you manage getting the right level of preparation? What do you do if you show up and you don't have the preparation? That's a good question. Did you guys get blinded over that? By the way, I say look. Okay. I just see you just squinting at me, and Dan's also laughing at me because I showed up to a sprint with like zero preparation. Um, so, again, this is like this is for everybody. It's their responsibility. It's their job. You come to work and you have to have what you need to succeed. And the best thing about a design sprint is that success is on everybody. Like you have to come here again, like that team effort. You can't come. You can't come to play that day and know that you're not bringing your best. Because if you know you're not bringing your best, you're just hurting everybody else around you. So leading up to a sprint, do your research, have your understanding like uh, from a product and understand your um, your tech base, understand why you can flex, how much time you have for, for your tech sprint from design, understanding, doing some pre-work and uh, some user research, like if you have to have the opportunity to, and most of us don't, um, from the marketing end, understand your demo, understand where you have to go, understand who you're trying to uh, entice. Because when you come in Monday, if you're all not working together, you're never gonna make it to Tuesday. So, that sounded a lot more darker than I really intended it to say. Anybody else? No, what? Jesus, man, quiet room. There's no way I covered everything y'all wanna know in 11 slides and an hour and five minutes. Oh, Evelyn's got something. Hold on, what you got? Oh, sure. It's about user research, isn't it? Sort of. Okay, so you have to sprint and then you have to you take those new findings into the next sprint, and then you sprint again, and you're sprinting this. So this overall research that you're preparing for the next one, is that on a Friday, or is that, is that even brought into the sprint um, methodology? So when we, the research is part of the, is that part of that pre-work. So that UX, if we have lucky enough to have a UX researcher with us, um, the knowledge that the researcher brings is part of that Monday shift. Right. When everybody's in the room and saying, you know, everybody gets their turn and they wave their flags and saying like, this is what I do, this is what I love, this is what we're gonna do. That UX researcher comes in and says the same thing. Like, I've, re I've looked at our demographic, this is part of what we're getting from here, this is what we're getting from here. Numbers are the best thing in the world, right Dan? Because mm -hmm. everybody loves metrics. Not only because it's numbers and it's quantitative, but it's just, it makes sense. It gives us a place to really start from versus wild westing our way through a sprint. So, you had something? Uh, possibly a dumb question. Where, where do you get your users from? Do you uh, oh. go to a <laughs> and, and do you also, do you base it on demographics? If you base it on demographics, where are you deciding on how your demographics are there? So, <laughs> that's a good question. You, you sort of covered, oh, and then you get to the users. I'm like, okay, that's what they're yeah. doing there. That's where you have a wonderful user researcher setting up your testing protocols, like the love young lady behind you, um, figuring out, hearing, hearing who your demo is, interviewing them, understanding that they're in version, core versions of where you want to be. Obviously with certain aspects, you don't have a baseline of like, we're just doing 18 to 24 males. You know, like it's, it's not like that. Sometimes you have to get everything from, you know, 25 to 35 making this amount of money doing this job versus 60 plus doing this job versus, because they all interact with the same site. So if you have a good user researcher or you uh, research partner, they'll do that work for you, hopefully, because if you have to do it, it is scary, because you know you never want to mess up. Um, and then they do the research through, conduct the interviews, have them walk through the experience, and uh, follow through with hopefully a positive deck of everything you did right and nothing you did wrong. <laughs> Shit, man. Come on. Something. Anybody? Nobody? Sam? Sure. Oh, that's not too excited for God's <laughs> sake. Hold on, what number are we at? <laughs> we ended at 14. 14. No, I'm saying we'll have more. Like, no, 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 Q&A ended it. Q&A ended it. You have 14. Oh. You won. All right. You, Dan, and someone else won. Good for you. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. We had like 375. Um, <laughs> no, so if you go to user testing and it does unfortunately do pretty poorly, what do you recommend doing? Like, I know what we did, but like, is that what you would have done? 
Yeah. You take the findings, you sit with your team, go through them, understand them. And again, like I said before, none of this you take the heart. None of this is on you. None of this is that you did something wrong. You, you just miss the mark as a team. You know, it just, it happens. Just learn, grow, go. Like, that's how it goes. Yeah, what's up? I just say, I mean, if they tell you, well, we, I don't like this, this, and that, well, what do you like? What do you want to see instead? Play yeah, that, sure. trust me. In user <laughs> testing, people are very opinionated. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but it is, it's also, you gather, uh, like, a medium of information. You'll hear the same things over. Oh, you know what? Like, I don't like the way that tagline sounds, or, you know, this is very hard to see, or this is hard to navigate. Like, when you hear commonalities through people, it makes it super easy as a group to say that we messed up on. You, you take one person, I've had, we always have one person, I use the guy Frank as an example. Older gentleman, he was, you know, uh, did uh, like oil sales, and using a phone to scan his receipts in, to use like a, like a you know, like any kind of concur or something like that, was not his thing. It's like, I don't like that. And he kept saying, Frank don't like that. Talk about himself yeah, very first. Thanks. Totally other psychological thing that we have to deal with Frank later, but that's fine. <laughs> that's something that we can't help. But when you look at the, at the bigger picture, that type of interaction is so commonplace now that it's something we have to always look into. You know, it's, I'm not gonna take that and be like, yo, Frank don't like that, we ain't gonna do it. It's gonna be like, he's one person in a small pool, and you just kind of work your way through it. And that's where the team goes. You kind of sit and look at each other and you'd be like, so Frank didn't like that. Like, ah, it's fine. We don't care about Frank. Like, but Frank would benefit from other things on our site, certain things that he does. Yeah, but you know, the feedback, you get what you call the trend line, Frank's the outlier. So you understand why he's there. And yeah. Yeah. It's, and that's the thing is that we have to be, and again, I'm sure Evelyn has plenty of thoughts on this, um, is that you always look at, you always have to look at things holistically. Uh, that's a buzzword that I didn't get a chance to get into now. Um, like, look at everything as a whole, you know? That's, and it is making, the idea is to make the best product that we have. And if we if we keep moving, like, the little part forward, we, there's no way we can be stopped. Yeah. So, well, the process that you went through. Yep. That is woven in somewhere with the whole process, right, when it comes to development. So this is just design. So right, after here, you that. just, once you get that final okay and we're ready to go, then you pass that off to your dev team, and then I got a whole smart handoff thing that I can go through, but we'll hold that off for later for another day. But that's the thing is, as we get this part done, and again, one of the biggest things we all suffer from is timeline, timeline uh, exhaustion. This needs to be done by this time, by this day, because it's going to dev, because it has to go to market this day. If we're doing this right, you know, God forbid, we get it done in that week. We have a second week to kind of just funnel through everything if we need to, but we just keep it going. You know, like getting the dev is then that's another, depending on how crazy you are, we pay yeah, and stuff. I was wondering like how many iterations of testing do you go through? Like does it just vary on the project? <clears throat> varies on the project, varies on the people. You know, it could be hopefully not more than two because you guys get the, the core information up front and then you could just literally pivot and just go at it, but you never know. You could always try something new. You can go into this and A-B test it against two versions and then really start getting freaking wild with stuff. But, yeah. Anybody else? Anybody want a drink? Want pizza? Um, do you think that every page is suited for a sprint or is that something you kind of have to decide beforehand? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I hired you. Um, <laughs> yes and no. I do believe certain aspects are built for sprints because of the information you can get done in four days. Or five days, depending on which way you want to really go at it. There are complete other experiences that need so much more work, so much more thought process, that an eight hour day doesn't, can not even scratch the surface of what we need to do. That's when we go to the two-week sprint, which we can cover next time in Design Sprint 2.2. Um, really? Yeah, I know. I will absolutely resell another one. Um, but that is the thing, is that, and that we figure out early on. When we go through the information that we need to do, and we need to figure out what we gotta do, and 
in that Monday, we say, listen, this is bigger than this is bigger than what we need to be. We need to extend out. We have to. It's you know, and if there's a chance to be like, you know what, let's do something else. We can do something else in this spring. We can do it because it's it all boils down to what we need to say and what we need to do, and we want to get through one. We don't want to keep iterating out, and iterating out. But you know, hope that answered it. I know. I'm sorry. I put you in like an eight-week sprint. <laughs>